views expressed by Aaron Bell, the sentiment that he expressed, spoke for a lot of people. There's no doubt about that. And those who were bereaved uh, during the pandemic will have felt a deep sense of anger. Uh, However, we haven't seen the full Gray report. And I think what people are also needing to do is to look at the the balance sheet. We looked a lot at the the debits, a lot of the things that have... uh, uh, that have failed during the pandemic. But let us look at the uh, the positives. Boris Johnson won an amazing election victory in 2019, the biggest Conservative majority since Margaret Thatcher's third election victory in 1987. He won that election on the basis of getting Brexit done, taking back control of our borders, which of course meant uh, dealing with the problem of mass immigration, Uh, And there was a certain stardust quality about him. And, of course, the fourth factor was that uh, Jeremy Corbyn was basically unelectable and and, and very much uh, uh, disliked by those up in the the red wall seats who are deeply patriotic. So what has happened since? The real problem is not so much um, the party gate and, and things like that, and I quite accept that uh, those are unacceptable, those of us who... Well, what, what is, what is the problem then, uh, Gerald? The, the problem is that he was elected on this, this mantra of getting Brexit done, which was the biggest issue facing the country yeah. at the time. And he has delivered that, but not entirely. And what has upset a lot of people, me included, is that he has decided to abandon the programme of... Uh, uh, of tearing up the EU rules which we inherited and uh, to which we are no longer bound because of his obsession with his net carbon business. Oh, OK. So, but, but you're, you're venturing into sort of new new territory now. You could talk about the national insurance uh, rise, which is just a tax rise and employers and employees as well. We could, we could do all of that. So you don't think that what's driving people's uh, contempt for the prime minister at the moment uh, is as much to do with his abject hypocrisy uh, about uh, creating rules and that fo- not following them himself. Rather, it's about other things. No, that is unquestionably uh, the biggest factor. But uh, I'm, I'm looking at the big picture. He did a brilliant job on... Are you supporting va- him or are you on, saying on that the, he should go? No, Andrew, what I'm trying to do is to... Explain the dilemma that those of us who supported Boris Johnson as leader of our party, the dilemma that we face. And there's no question about it. He did brilliantly on the vaccine program, which is in which Britain led the world. And he did that by not backing one pharmaceutical company, but by taking the risk of backing five pharmaceutical companies. And all of them happened to produce effective vaccines. That was a great program. But as I say, what he's got to do now in my view, he's got to get a grip at number 10. Clearly, that uh, that, that has been a, a shambles. Most members of Parliament have no idea who these people are in the background of number 10. I, I've only once heard of Minera Merz. I gather she's been involved with him for many years, and it's uh, therefore uh, of concern that somebody who's worked so closely with him right. has, has gone. But the, the, the Conservative par- Parliamentary Party needs number 10 to get a grip. Secondly, he's got to drop this obsession uh, with net zero. Right. I'm not going to go spend 16 grand on, on a heat pump. He's got to sort out... It's going to cost you more than that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much, Andrew. He's got to sort out the Northern Ireland Protocol. The EU uh, weaponised the border with, uh, right. between Ireland and Northern Ireland. He's got to deal with that. He's got to make war on this absurd wokery business which is upsetting so many conservatives okay so and, tradi- he's uh, ta- uh, and, and he's got to tackle immigration if he can't do that uh, then there's is- got to be somebody else